What's up, everybody? What's up? So, today, I, I, it might come out today or tomorrow. Um, Bid 90s, written and directed by Jonah Hill. It's based on like LA skate scene, hip hop culture in the 90s, and so far, the trailers look amazing. Yeah, I gotta say, overall, like, just from watching the trailers, like, the authenticity of it is like unmatched. I don't see a lot of movies that seems so relatable even though I wasn't <laughs> a, a skater in LA in the mid 90s you know but like you can totally uh, just clearly like pick up the storyline and like understand like the the whole motive behind it and the vibes so clearly and I think that, that is just like is so awesome for one for Jonah Hill to do it because he's just such an OG and he really like <laughs> keeps it coming but also just overall like I think it's always fun to see a movie that doesn't go by like the basic um, checklist for what a blockbuster film should be, you know, and actually go, you know, works on their own timeline and with their own blueprints of what they want to create and show people. And I think, you know, it's, it's pretty obvious that people are very excited about it and I guess after this weekend, we'll see what the box office is looking like. Yeah, it should be dope because I've already seen like a few like really LA skaters that are gonna be in it. So that that itself is like super authentic and raw. And I'm excited to see those guys, some of those guys, act for the first time. Definitely, yeah, true. Underratedly, that's pretty crazy. But yeah, I can't believe the the fact that they have like a lot of real skaters in it too. It just brings it to a whole other level, and I think it would have been a big disservice to not do that, but I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm happy that everyone, you know, got to kind of, you know, put their own words and personality into the making of the movie itself. Yeah, it should be sick. I'm probably gonna see it tomorrow. True, same. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about, let's shift off, since we're talking about skating, let's talk about uh, Supreme and um, their drop. Um, it's another North North Face collab. Uh, my question is like, are we still here for the Supreme North Face? Um, and I know it's like one of their best, you know, selling products usually. But this parka, the leather parka that they're putting out, uh, four colors, and it's retailing for a little, a little bit above a thousand dollars. So, what do you think about that? It's insane. That price point is like ridiculous. I <clears throat> I was pretty blown away. I have to say when I when I saw that, considering that usually they're like four or five, six hundred maybe. And I mean, I understand that it's like you know patent leather or whatever on them, but still like that that price point is outrageous. I think the the classic like North Face Supreme Parka silhouette like. Uh, can never die it's just too ingrained in like this culture but they they could be doing it so much better they're not giving like any creative output into it anymore and it's just like mundane <laughs> like there's nothing there's nothing particularly intriguing about it as like a piece to an outfit you know but the the aesthetic of the Supreme North Face, I, I can understand for sure. Yeah, I feel like as far as Supreme goes, the North Face collabs have always kind of been some of their best. And this one, I, I was kind of, you know, like I was kind of not impressed. Um, oh, definitely. Yeah, and then for them to be raising the price, I feel that this could be maybe a tactic that they're trying to like kill off resale, something something like that mm -hmm. there has to be some something yeah, right yeah, yeah totally i think it's an interesting point if that works too that would be because like how much higher can real like i mean i understand that you know things can go for astronomical numbers but the the jackets themselves aren't even that insane that they could be like really worth you know more than a couple hundred dollars more than that initial price tag so i think that's going to be interesting to see how people line up and stuff for that but i think just overall like with a north face collab supreme pretty much just gets up a, a canvas of a jacket to work with and usually it's 
you know, the the paisley like bandana look or you know, whatever it may be, the mountains, the cheetahs, like whatever. And I, I feel like they have a lot of fun with it usually and it's just interesting to see this uh, turn in the road, but maybe they're just dialing it back for a season, hopefully, just to, you know, <laughs> neutralize the situation again. Yeah, some of the rest of the drop was pretty intriguing. Had a lot of dope looks, especially like the puffer jacket. I'm not sure the name of it, but um, one, a couple of the pieces looked pretty like interesting and hopefully they, you know, go in that direction moving forward. <laughs> Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, Supreme can have like some whack drops, but there's always at least still a couple items that like are either original or just cool. And that, you know, is, is authentic enough for me, I guess. Like it's never gonna be every item in a Supreme release that's fire, but they're pretty good about at least keeping it fairly legit. You know, the majority of the time, I would say. Right. And moving on from there, I think the most legitimate topic would be the Polo and Palace teaser collab coming up. I think uh, that is going to be off the chain. I can already tell that Palace is going to go so crazy with it because that is such like a... Polo would just be such a fun brand to work with as a streetwear brand being the collaborator, you know, because the, the worlds are so far apart and Polo, you know, by doing this collab clearly sees that like streetwear is like a real actual category of fashion now and not just like this weird little thing you know that no one really knew if it was gonna like come or go or you know really what the situation was gonna be and I think that because of that and because Polo is trying to like uh, just get taxed with a younger audience I think that they're gonna let Palace just have like entire creative control over it and I think we're gonna be seeing some very unlike polo designs and I think that'll be cool. Yeah, hopefully. Especially because, you know, this is obviously the first skate brand polo's ever done a collab with. They haven't done many collabs at all. And then for it to be a skate brand, a streetwear brand, it should be interesting. Also something some something from overseas. Obviously Palace is based in London and you know polo's from the US but I, it's gonna be it's gonna be amazing. Regardless. I think it's so, gonna be super clean. You know, like the only thing that we're gonna like stray away from is gonna be if it's just like a T-shirt with both logos. That's, that would be the biggest disappointment. Yeah, but. that's true. Even then, it could still look kind of. No, cool. it's gonna look. Say. That would look dope, but it, you know, we expect a lot more. Um, no, definitely. I think they're gonna be coming with some high quality stuff. I think it's gonna be very aesthetically pleasing, and I think. I think this collection is going to be one of those collections where like you could make an outfit just out of the pieces from it itself yeah. and it works. It's not like, you know, with a lot of releases, I think it's pretty hard to make a real outfit combining all the items to look cool together. But I think with this, knowing those two brands, they're going to go with really um, just solid colorways and designs overall that will like mix together for a really cool lookbook, I think. Right, and with Supreme becoming more and more popularized over the years, you have kind of like Palace keeping that authentic street, you know, like the authentic street kind of like impression on, especially on people who are into streetwear and who aren't really into wearing what everybody else is wearing. Palace has been the staple that has been like very reliable and always a go-to. And then you have Polo, which is like, without ever really trying, has become like the godfather of streetwear. <laughs> And pretty much just like everyone who you know you know started off like getting interested in streetwear, mm -hmm. at some point you had a polo piece that you've sought after. That is true. Yeah, yeah good point actually. <laughs> yeah, some of their older pieces too are especially insane. Like all the old Olympic stuff and everything yeah. like that. It's so crazy. Recently, I just found out you know about the Jordan store that opened up on Broadway mm, here in true. downtown LA. Um, I saw bits and pieces of the opening and it was really dope because they, I noticed a few LA artists that they got to do artwork for their show, mm -hmm. show or showroom or whatever. Um, and that's dope. I like, the, I like when, you know, big brands, like international brands come through to a city. Obviously this is like a big city. Um, I, I believe New York has had a Jordan store for like ever. Yeah. And you know, we finally have one here. So um, it's dope for them to see like get LA artists and like people that 
you know, are important in the community up in there. Yeah, I agree. I think Jordan and Nike, um, you know, as one in the same brand are really trying to like, I wouldn't say give back, but like reincorporate themselves into just like the streetwear culture kind of. And they've always been relevant, of course, but like I think um, that they're really trying to become genuinely like relatable again and almost more of like a a smaller uh, brand, like kind of like shape shift and stuff in terms of like designs and aesthetic and things like that, because that is like what's cooler nowadays. And Nike and Jordan have just been running with the same silhouettes for like decades. Yeah. And I think it's pretty interesting to see now that they're like, they're going crazy with all the uh, designs. Like they're just switching so many things up and like trying to pull all this crazy stuff out of the box. That's just like, I think it's a, it's cool to see a brand, like a st strong brand go back to like really creative and like open-minded roots. And I think that a lot of people appreciate that. Yeah, that's a good point. I, I love too that they've been embracing customs and you know, like mm -hmm. different color, like Nike ID is back. Um, oh, is it really? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Nike ID is back and they keep adding different, like different silhouettes and all that. but. They had um, Blue the Great, Brian Blue, he was doing custom Jordans, he was like painting them at mm. the opening and stuff, so it's That's really sick. sick, yeah, really sick. No, definitely, even back um, uh, at the Grove, Nike did a pop-up like a few months ago for their like, uh, I think it was the all whole, star, all yeah, star, yeah, 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 you're right, it, more than a few months ago, um, for like the Air Force One designing stuff and like all, all that stuff they're doing, I think is so interesting because it's like really like power to the player kind of like they're just yeah. giving all the opportunities to like the actual person who's going to wear the shoe rather than like the designer of it. And I think that is like a, a very like contrasting way to create products nowadays yeah they're tapped in they're paying attention definitely so. definitely and moving on to uh the latest in the bathing ape world we have a collaboration with adidas coming out the latest one of 2018 it's featuring a lot of reflective material and general sporty track wear kind of aesthetic going on which i think is pretty cool i'm glad to see them bringing the 3M reflective material back into play because I haven't been seeing that much lately and I've always appreciated it as like a, a type of material and ink and whatever else they use it for because it adds so much to a piece of clothing like that bang when you turn a light on it just like makes it seem like a, a piece of technology or like alien clothing or something you know it's just like a whole nother just like gateway of like utter coolness <laughs> Yeah, I, I haven't seen any, but I as far as Nike, I mean, sorry, Adidas and Babe goes, the past few years, their collabs have been really solid. Um, you, it, for me, I see a lot of Babe, so when the Adidas collab comes around, I, I always notice how like well put together it is. It's not mm. just like, let's throw this here, let's throw that there. Like, no, they really put a lot of thought into the design looking good yeah they do take their time on it i think they really care about the relationship they have with each other as like two mecca brands and i feel like that the i get just the connection they have is like so strong and valuable that they really do put the most that they can into every season of it just to keep consumers happy and keep each other happy you know working as a collective because it's it can be hard like collabing with other brands <clears throat> especially on that high of a level it's so easy to have different uh, creative directions and the fact that they've been able to keep each other grounded and like relative to the design and concepts of the both brands i think is is, is underratedly pretty hard to do, and I gotta applaud them for that. Right, right. Another big collab that a lot of people are excited about is NBA and Mitchell and Ness. Now, there's like some jerseys, I've seen bombers, shorts. Um, as far as, far, they did a Lakers, Lakers, um, they did all that for Lakers, and then, oh, even a tee. Mm. But um, I believe it came out last week at the Bay Ballet, mm, and then yeah. this week it was going to be online for everybody. Um, and that, that's pretty dope, you know, this NBA starting up again. And as far as Babe goes, I feel like 
in the past few years, ever since they, you know, were bought out by a Chinese company, mm -hmm. people have kind of just like straight away and not been like as into the new babe as they have Definitely. as the old babe. But this year, the collabs are coming out really strong. Yeah, yeah. I agree. And they're like actually somewhat being original again rather yeah. than kind of like recycling the old Nego stuff. Like, just like for the past couple of years, they've just been messing with so many like shark designs and like right. split camos and whatever and it's like it's nothing new it's just like re like reinterpreted yeah. and i'm glad that they're like actually trying to be creative and like bring a completely new item to the table again because i think that's that's like the best thing babe has ever been able to do and right. the fact that they're continuing it is <laughs> music to my ears yeah yeah also they've been working with new artists and just like doing collabs mm -hmm. it, yeah Good job this year. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> we applaud you, babe. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously. And I think that's about it yeah. in this week of fashion and pop culture. Yeah, thanks for watching. All right, thank you. Peace out.